just a few minutes, we're going to read from Isaiah 61. In the Old Testament, if you've got a Bible, you can turn there. If not, we're going to have the verses on the screen. I want to share a message today simply entitled, Now and Then. Now and Then. You know, life is a journey. And life has a lot of different experiences on this journey. And it's especially true for those of us who are following Jesus because we have not only natural experiences, but now we have experience with, experiences with God on this journey. But have you ever looked at the circumstances of your life and asked the question, God, why? What's happening? I don't get it. I think we've probably all been there. If you haven't, cheer up. You'll be there here soon. So this message will help you on that journey. But you know, life can be tough. Life can be challenging. Life can even be confusing at times. And there are moments in life when we hurt. Things don't go well. And for a lot of reasons, we can carry pain over what has happened or what's happening in life. Last Sunday morning, as, as I was talking about healing, I happened to quote a scripture, and boy, something went off inside of me, and it's been burning all week, and so I'm going to use this in my introduction today. When the Apostle Paul wrote about this journey of life, there are two phrases that he used that I think are really important for every believer. First of all, in Romans chapter 1, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it brought me to salvation. And he said, in this salvation, this life with God, living with God, seeing God involved in my life, he said, God's faithfulness, his rightness is revealed, but he uses this language. He, he says, God is revealed from faith to faith. So it speaks of a journey, and he goes on to say that the just learn to live by faith. And it means on this journey I live by faith, I encounter a problem or an issue or a circumstance, and I trust God by faith, and God walks me through that and turns it into something good. But then I go to the next situation. How many of you know there's a next situation lying somewhere down the road? No matter what you've come through, there's more to come. But when we walk by faith, from faith to faith, our faith is continually growing as we learn to trust God. And then the second thing that Paul gave us to kind of understand this journey, in 2 Corinthians 3, Paul said, when we look into the face of God, it's like looking into a mirror. And we see the greatness of God and suddenly we realize that God is trying to pour his greatness his character, his nature, his glory, if you will, into our lives. The glory of God simply means who God is, what he is, the weight that he carries. And I often use this illustration. You know, you may be in a room with some very important people and all of a sudden somebody real important walks in or some celebrity walks in. It's like, ooh, because they carry this weight, this weight of their presence, their glory. When they walk in the room, everybody turns and notices. But I'm going to tell you something. When God walks in the room, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. He outweighs everybody else. And so the glory of God, when we look into his glory, we realize he's trying to pour his glory into our lives. And we begin to see what he's doing in our lives. And he says it this way. Paul says we're transformed, we're changed from glory to, gl to glory. From a place of glory where we see God's presence at work to more glory as we see more of God working in our lives. In other words, this journey is a journey of growth. So these two concepts, faith to faith and glory to glory, they help us understand that as long as we live, God will be working in our lives. Now, before I get to Isaiah 61, I want to use one more illustration to help set up what I'm going to say today about now and then. As we follow Jesus, as we walk with Jesus, I think we develop three different views of life, spiritual views. There are natural views that see this, but spiritual views as well. And here they are. Number one, we see mugshots of what we used to be. How many remember what you used to be before Jesus got involved in your life? 
Do you ever look back at the old pictures and you think, oh my God, I can't believe that's who I was. Hide those pictures, quick. You know, we see mug shots in the news or on television now and then. You see somebody at their worst. Somebody gets arrested for a DUI or they get in a fight and they're all banged up. And you look and you say, oh man, that's rough. We have mug shots of our past. This is what I used to be before God got involved in my life. But then we have these snapshots. Snapshots are almost gone today because all of our snapshots are on a, can- are on a telephone. We used to print them out and have all these little snapshots, these pictures of where we've been and what we've done. Snapshots talk about who we are and how God is changing us along the way. It's like going back and looking through old pictures, whether it's on your phone or whether it's actual pictures. And you see how over time you are changing, how your face is changing, how your hair is changing. How wrinkles are showing up. You know, these snapshots show all the different aspects of this journey that we're in. But then the third way we see life is we see a portrait of what we will be when God is finished with us. How many of you believe that God's got better things ahead for you? Do you believe that today? And so we never want to get stuck somewhere we want to keep growing into all that god's trying to do in our lives so why do we some si- sometimes struggle through life there are a lot of reasons but this morning i want you to notice too sometimes we become so consumed with the past what happened back then that we forget about the importance of navigating life right now and then sometimes a second reason We try to leap into the future. Well, then, someday, then, and we get so busy trying to leap forward, we overlook the importance of navigating life properly right now. You know, then lies on either side of now. There's the then in the past. There's the then in the future. But God wants us to learn to navigate every moment with his faith with his grace, with his glory, that he can paint the portrait he's trying to paint in our lives. So if I'm going to live a godly, healthy life, I've got to learn to release the past to God, live in the now, and let God paint his purpose all over my life because that's what he does. And that's what he's trying to do. So let's dive into scripture for a few minutes this morning. Isaiah 61. I love Isaiah 61. It's in the Old Testament. But it's quoted by Jesus in Luke chapter 4 when he was about to begin his ministry. And really, this was the foundation. This was the mission statement for Jesus' ministry. Here's what it says, Isaiah 61. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. Now notice this, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, I'm going to come back to these verses in just a couple of minutes, but I want to share a couple of things. The mission that Jesus received from the Father, when he said, the spirit of God is upon me, the spirit of God is upon me for this purpose. For these purposes this is what I am anointed to do see when you read the first part of that verse the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and the next question is why 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 is God's Spirit upon us Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's called me to do specific things and get this the mission of Jesus was all about people people Jesus was all about meeting people right where they were, changing their lives, and then empowering them to move forward. 
See, sometimes as Christians in America, we get stuck in this thing of, well, I already prayed that prayer. I already asked Jesus into my heart, so I've already done all that. So I'm just going to wait until someday I go through the pearly gates. We lose sight of what God wants to do and what he's trying to do in our future because we live in the then. God wants us to learn to live with God in the now. And so the, the portrait that God is trying to paint with our lives aligns with and is a continuation of the nature and mission of Jesus. In other words, whatever God has called you to do in life, whatever he pours his spirit on your life to do, it will be connected directly with the mission of Jesus. We're continuing the work that he started. So, how do I navigate the now? How do I correctly live in the middle of what I'm going on, uh, going through? If I had time this this morning to go to every person in this room one by one and walk through every single row all these seats and let everybody share what they're going through right now we would hear hundreds of different stories of what people are dealing with some would say life is great right now some would say boy is it tough right now there would be all kinds of different stories in this room of what's going on but the question is regardless of what we're dealing with today Regardless of where you are and what you're facing, how do I navigate this moment? How do I navigate now? In this passage, Isaiah 61, there are three things I want you to notice that God will give us to navigate every season of life. First, it says God gives us beauty to replace our ashes. God gives us beauty to replace our ashes. I love the songs that we were singing this morning because they all connect to this message so well. But it talks about the fact that sometimes, and one of the songs talked about the fact that sometimes my mind wrestles with who God says I am and who God says I can be because I remember where I came from. God gives us his beauty to replace our ashes. I'm going to tell you something today. I don't care if you're sitting there and you think, I have made a horrible mess of my life and there are so many hurts and pains. I don't think I'm ever going to get through this. Let me tell you something. This is not impossible for God. God's concerned about where you are. You may look around and say, man, I've burned everything to the ground. Only thing that's left is ashes. And God says, that's okay. I'm, I'm good with ashes. I'll blow them away and I'll pour my beauty into your life. And, and I, I love this passage of scripture because Beauty means God's going to bring himself. But I, I love what the psalmist said on several occasions about the Lord's presence. He said, man, God is beautiful. The presence of the Lord is beautiful. Being in God's house, it's beautiful. It's an experience. Why? Because God is perfect. And God always makes the right decision. God always does the right thing. And what, what he's saying here is, I will step into your life in the middle of all the ashes and all that's gone wrong, and I'll begin to turn things around and I'll blow away the past and I'll change your outlook on life and you'll begin to see my beauty working in your life. He says, I'll give you beauty for the ashes. See, that's why Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Bring that mess to me and throw it at my feet and I'll show you a new way of life that brings beauty into everything that you do. You see, if I give my life to God, he will clean up what happened back then and he'll begin to paint his beauty into my life right now. Right now. God's beauty blows away, washes away all the ashes of the past and he gives us a brand new life in Christ you know if, if we compare the snapshot of where we are to the mugshot of where we were we look beautiful <laughs> come on think about it you think about where you were and you compare it to where you are we look beautiful that that's why I got offended or that nobody told me I look beautiful today turn to somebody and say you really do look beautiful and if nobody tells you that, just realize they didn't see you back then. That's why they don't know how beautiful you are. But here's the deal. We look beautiful because it's God's doing. And that's what he does. He gives us beauty for ashes. The second thing it says here, he gives us joy to replace our mourning. 
My heart always hurts when I see somebody following Jesus and they, they always got this sad look on their face like, life is so tough. It's usually because they haven't realized God's given them joy to replace the sadness and the mourning of the past. And the way it's worded here, it says, he gives us the oil of joy. The oil of joy. Anytime you see oil in scripture, it usually goes back to the oil that they used in the Old Testament when they anointed kings and priests and different ones. And they would take this oil and it wasn't like super thin oil. It was like a heavy, heavy, heavy oil. It was almost like molasses. And they just poured it out on your head and it just ran all over you and it got all over you and it didn't come off easily. It was just something you carried around and it just was symbolizing God's presence and his power upon you. And what he's saying here is, when I get involved in your life, I will pour my spirit upon you, it will run all over you, and no matter what's going on, you will have joy and people will see it even when they don't understand it. Because joy, joy is a fruit and it's a product of God's spirit who lives in us. See, God says, I will be with you and I'll strengthen you by my presence, my spirit. And you'll be cheerful because you'll know everything's going to be OK. Look where God has brought me from. Look where God has brought me to. Those were difficult days. There may be difficult days ahead, but God's going to be with me. And I've got the joy of the Lord because God is not going to let me lose these battles. He's not. We have joy. James chapter one, James says, count it all joy when you fall into trials, because you're going to learn that as you go through this walking by faith, that God produces patience in you. He begins to make you perfect, which means complete, lacking nothing. You're going to be mature and you're going to know in every circumstance, God is still God. Now, I know there's somebody here today, probably several somebodies. You're walking through a difficult time and it's a little tough to be joyful in this moment. And you're wondering, how am I going to get through this time? How am I going to get through this now moment? Nehemiah, when he addressed God's people, when they were rebuilding their lives and their city, he made this statement. He said, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. God's going to strengthen you if you'll trust him in this season. Because joy allows me to look forward and it will sustain me as I walk through the challenges of life. If I'll trust God and face life with his joy, he will turn every challenge into a victory and produce more of his beauty in me because that's what he does. That's who God is and that's what he does. And then the third thing that we see here, God gives us praise to overcome our weariness and our limitations. When we face life's challenges, that's when we learn how limited we are. That's when we're reminded, I have this much strength and it doesn't seem to be as big as this problem that I'm facing. But you know, God's grace is perfected in our weakness. God's grace is really proven in moments when we're facing our limitations. And God gives us praise, not weariness. God gives us praise to overcome our limitations. And this passage, I love the way it words it. It says he gives us a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. Mourning, weariness. God gives us praise as a garment. You see, a garment is something that has to be put on and worn. See, some of us say, oh God, why don't you do something about this? And I think sometimes God says, you know, you've been walking with me a long time. You ought to be mature enough to look up and praise me for all the things I've brought you through and realize I'm not going to fail you now. He's given us a garment of praise to put on and to wear. And you know, I think sometimes, I'll, I'll speak for myself for a moment here. Sometimes in difficult days, 
we get up in the morning, we get our coffee, we get our routine going, and some days we forget to put on that garment of praise. And when that happens, things begin to shift inside of us and outside of us. Because praise declares my trust and my faith in God. Praise says this is what God did. He'll be God in my future. It allows me to see the possibilities ahead rather than the problems I'm facing right now. And something else you need to understand about praise. Praise is a thermostat. It changes the temperature. It changes the pressure of my circumstances. Some of you say, man, my life, my world right now. When I talk about now, it is hot, it is tough. How many of you know it's going to be 100 degrees this afternoon outside? How many of you are glad for air conditioning? You glad for that? Well, here's the deal. Sometimes our lives get a lot hotter than 100 degrees. And under that pressure, we say, what am I going to do? Best thing you can do is begin to praise God, and it changes the temperature of the circumstances around you. Praise is a thermostat. And not only that, praise will combat my weariness. Generally speaking, when the pressure is on, I'm either going to become depressed and weary, or I'm going to praise God and pursue the future, the plans he has for my life. God says, hey, I've given you beauty. I've given you joy. Now, you need to look over the shoulder and then look ahead, and you need to stop and praise me because I'm not going to abandon you. I'm going to walk you through this too. It's going to be okay. Put on the garment of praise. Yes, got an amen back there. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. If I will trust God and make praise a continual part of my journey, I will see God paint his portrait in my life because that's what he does. That's what he does. He gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, I want to move to the last part of this message, and it's going to be quite short, so I'm almost done this morning. We've got some special things we're going to be doing in a couple of minutes. But I want to go back to verse number three of Isaiah 61. The Lord said, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Here's the last part. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We get so consumed with ourselves and what God needs to do for us to make us comfortable. Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that God is also trying to use our lives to make a statement to the world around us. One of the things I've learned the last two and a half, three years is there are a lot of unstable people in our world blown by every wind even in the church world every new thing that blows through the church whoosh, they just go sailing down the road in another direction there's not a lot of stability in our world but God says in the middle of all this I'm raising up people and if they will walk with me I'll make them oak trees of righteousness where they get their roots down into the ground. And no matter what comes in the world, they're not going to be moved away from God and who he is and what he says he is and what he says he'll do. See, a lot of people look at the church world right now and say, well, we've lost our purpose since all this. No, we haven't. We just got started. We just have to understand we've been through a strange season, but we're moving into a season of victory and we're going to continue to walk with God and God is going to establish us as oak trees of righteousness. That's what he's doing. You know why he's going to do that? Because that's what he does. That's what he does. And God is trying to use the now moments of my life to paint a portrait that looks like himself. See, we're trying to say, oh, God, make me look better, make me look better, make me look better. He says, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make you look like me. That'll be much better. I'm pouring my beauty into your life, but I'm not finished. I'm still working. So how's this going to happen? From faith to more faith. 
from his glory to more of his glory. And as I get to the end of my message, let me tell you, where we are today, where you are today, this is not the end of the journey. None of us have arrived yet. This is not the end of the journey. This is just a snapshot on the journey. How many of you have ever gone through pictures and a picture comes up and you remember a really difficult time in your life and how tough things were back then? Do you go into mourning for what you went through or do you go into praise for what God's brought you through? See, some of us are in mourning right now. Oh, God, these circumstances are so hard. Interest rates are five and a half percent and going up. I need to sell my house. I waited three months too long. God, what am I going to do? Can I tell you something? God's still God. God's still God. God's still God. And God wants to understand. This is just one more snapshot in life. That someday we're going to look back on it and say, wow, did God do something big in my life? And out of that, God gets glory. People around us see his hand at work in us. From faith to faith, from glory to glory. I'm here to tell you, life can be tough sometimes. I know that. I've, I've had a few bumps in my road. There used to be some ashes that God's blown away. But I got to tell you today, when we're in tough times, when we're in good times, whatever season we find ourselves in right now, even if we're hurting, God's given us his beauty for our ashes. He'll pour the oil of his presence on us for our difficult days and our mourning. He'll give us praise. He'll put praise in our mouths to deal with with the heaviness that's trying to work in our lives. Because that's what he does. That's who he is. That's what he does. In just a moment, I'm going to pray for you. The worship team's coming out. We're going to do one more song that really is going to help us take this message and solidify it in our hearts. Take this word and let the faith that comes from it get really planted in us. So as the team comes out right now, and as they begin to get set up for this next song, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. And I want to pray for you today. Because I know everybody, everybody in this room, you're in a now moment of some kind. And I want to pray for you. Father, I worship you today. I thank you that you are a great God and you've never failed. As I look over my shoulder, even in days when I was confused and didn't understand what was happening, you were there, you were present, and you knew exactly what you were doing. So, Father, today I, I lift every person in this room to you. I lift to you those who are watching online and those who will hear this message later. And I pray that your word would speak to them, that we would remember that with your word comes faith. Faith is in the DNA of your voice and your words. That faith would arise in us to understand no matter what we're in right now, a good day, a bad day, whatever day it might be, we're going to look to you and realize you gave us beauty for our ashes. And you'll give us more. You've given us the oil of joy for our mourning and you'll give us more. You've given us praise to honor you, to thank you, to glorify you for your faithfulness to help us navigate what's coming next. So, Father, in this moment, I lift my hands to you and I just begin to praise you. I say, thank you, Father. Join me all over this room. Just lift your hands, lift your voice. God, I honor you today. I glorify you. I thank you for your faithfulness in my life. I declare your greatness. I trust you. I believe you. I will not be moved. And I will see your hand work in my life now and in the picture you paint in the future. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to stand to your feet. We're going to worship God together through one more song. But this is a song to help us seal this moment, what God is saying to us, what he's doing in our lives. Let's worship God together.
every burden is carried What a mystery it is How my heaviness is lifted In a garment of praise you give beauty for ashes You trade joy for our sadness For our morning is gladness That's just what you do That's just what you do
My stubbornness and my rebellion I do things my way and make a mess of things he's still willing when I turn to him to turn my mess into something beautiful just before we go today before we conclude actually I know there's probably some people watching online or maybe in the house today and you've never really come to a place where you've committed your life to Christ the one who died for you the one who gave his life to bring you into relationship with God maybe you've had a lot of questions and maybe today you still got a lot of questions maybe you look at life and you say well I'm not sure but there's something in your heart that's turning over and over that's the Spirit of God knocking on the door of your heart and God saying I'll do this for you because that's what I do I'll do it for you too And this journey with God begins with us saying God I need you we call it prayer it's just communication God I need you I want to lead you in a prayer right now, whether you're watching online or whether you're in the room, I want to lead you in a prayer that it's just words of faith that will help unlock your heart, give God a chance to start working your life. Everybody in the house, pray this with me today. Say, God, I need you. And I open my heart to you. Please come into my life. I accept Jesus as my Savior. And I choose Jesus to become the Lord of my life. So I give everything to you. From this day forward, you will be my father. I'll see your hand at work in my life. I'll be your child. I'll learn your ways. I will follow you. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for working in my life. Amen. Amen. Now here's the deal. That's not the end of the journey. That's the beginning of the journey. We want to give you a little gift that will help you get started on your journey of faith. As you leave the building today, out in the, the middle of the lobby, as you exit the glass doors, there's a counter set up there. It's got a sign. It's got a picture of a booklet called The Next Seven Days. It's our free gift to you. 
we'd love to give it to you. Just stop by the counter and pick up there. We also will have prayer teams at the front of the building who are here to pray with anyone for any need. You can walk up to one of these teams. They'll give you the book there. No strings attached. We simply want to help you get started walking with God. If you've got questions, they can help you. If you need prayer for something else, they can help you there as well. We want to welcome you to this journey of faith and to the family of God. Can we put our hands together and welcome new believers today. God bless you. Awesome. Hey, can we thank Pastor Gary for that message this morning? Go ahead and be seated for just a couple more moments. We're going to conclude here in just a minute. A couple of more things that we want to do this morning before we go. First of all, right now in this moment, we just want to take some time to do something that we love to do usually at this time in our service, and that's to honor God by bringing our tithes and our offerings into his house. And first of all, I want to say the first thing we always say in this moment, and that is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for putting God first with your treasure, with what he's entrusted you with. How many know that everything we have is from God? It's his anyway. You know, when we bring our tithes, when we bring our offerings into his house, we're simply returning the blessing that he's poured into our lives. We're saying, God, I trust you. I put you first and I thank you that you're my source and you're my provider. In this message this morning, I was just reminded I have so much to thank God for in my life. So when it comes to my tithe, my offering, when it comes to the treasure that I have, when it comes to my possessions, why would I not honor God and put him first? Because he's been so, so good to me. There's a few different ways that you can give this morning digitally. If you'd like to give one of those, uh, one of those ways, you can look at the options that are there on the screen. If you're a guest with us today, please know there's never any compulsion to give. It's a free will offering, something that we do just to honor God and say thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, not only that, but if you'd like to give in person this morning, you can grab one of those envelopes there on your seat backs. You can drop it at one of our giving stations, which is just before you exit the auditorium on either side of the exit doors. There's also a giving station outside near our kids' first time check-in area. But do what's most convenient for you. And again, we say thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. Hey, a couple more things that we want to share with you. Just a couple of quick announcements before we go. First of all, if you signed up to serve at our teacher celebration event that's happening this Thursday, we are very excited about this. And you might have planned this morning to come to this service and then go to a meeting that we have happening at 1045 right after this service. And it's happening through those double doors down the hallway to uh, the, in the chapel, which is now called M1 down there on your left. If you want to go down there, we'll be meeting with everybody that signed up to serve this Thursday at teacher celebration. But not only that, if you're still interested in serving and perhaps you didn't sign up, we invite you to come. We would love to meet you, tell you more about what we're doing. Hey, we are building a new bridge into our public schools, and we can't think of a better place that needs the love of Jesus than in our local schools. So we're doing this as an outreach event to build a new bridge, and we're doing this by honoring our teachers, and we're very much excited about it. We would love for you to be a part of it. If you want to come and find out more info, just come right after the service through those double doors, and we'll meet you and let you know what's going on. Hey, not only that, but we are excited about another thing that's coming up. We are just a few weeks away from a new season of Connect Groups that's launching this fall. And that's all Bridge Church Connect Groups. That's Bridge Women Groups, Bridge Men Groups which are going to be happening as well this fall. We're very much excited about this. So here's the deal. If you have led a group in the past and you're continuing or you're planning to continue leading that connect group, we want to meet with you two weeks from today. And not only that, but maybe you're interested in leading a connect group and you say, hey, I want to help people build community here at the bridge, get connected and take their next steps of faith. We are excited about that. We want to meet you. We want to tell you what connect groups look like here at the bridge and how you can be involved. This is one of the most vital areas of community here in church life. And we want you to be a part of it. So, hey, come and join us. If you want to go to the Bridge app later today, you can click on the Connect Groups link on the Bridge app. You'll get all the details for Connect Group Leader meetings that are happening two weeks from today. Two weeks from today for all Connect Group leaders. Let me re-emphasize, if you're a Bridge Women Connect Group leader, a Bridge Men Connect Group leader, or a regular Bridge Church Connect Group leader, we want to meet with you, all of you. And if you're interested in leading for the first time, we want to meet with you and tell you all about it because Connect Groups are a vital part of church life and we would love for you to lead one, all right? Hey, can we thank Andy Cherry for being with us this morning? He was such a blessing to us today. Thanks, brother. We appreciate you. Hey, I hope you've had a great time at church today. We love you, Bridge family. Have an amazing Sunday and an awesome week. We'll see you in church next weekend.